Does your ferret have a bump growing on its tail? It may be something called a chordoma. It's not a zit, it's not a cyst, it's actually a type of tumor. <laughs> Just kidding, it's gonna be fine. Hi, my name is Haley and I'm from The Modern Ferret and today we're gonna to teach you all the basics, how to recognize a chordoma and how to treat it. All right, let's get started. Number one, what is a chordoma? It's not a cyst, it's not a zit, it's a tumor. But don't freak out, it's not that big of a deal. They're actually relatively common and there's a pretty straightforward way to treat them. A chordoma, according to a really good resource we like to refer to, where are you? Ferrets for Dummies. Uh, chordomas are caused by embryonic tissue located in your ferret's vertebrae that basically decided to just like keep on growing for some reason. So it's not something you did, you didn't look at your ferret the wrong way and cause this weird growth to happen. It was kind of like pre-programmed in their body. Another great resource that we like to use is this book here. It is called Ferrets, Rabbits, and Rodents Clinical Medicine and Surgery, third edition and it gives a really nice concise description of what chordomas usually look like. And basically what you're looking for is kind of an irregular growth on the tip of your ferret's tail. Um, it's mostly round, very firm, white, gray in color. Um, we have a ferret right now, Moose, that has a chordoma and that's pretty close to what he has. So that's a, it's a very accurate description if you're looking to decide if your ferret has a chordoma or not. Are chordomas painful? Yes and no. It kind of depends on how big they are and also your ferret's specific situation. If you are lucky enough to catch your ferret's chordoma early on, so think um, about like half a pea size, just a little bump on their tail, most likely it's not gonna be too painful for your ferret because it hasn't grown too big to make life a little bit difficult and knocking into stuff. Um, as your ferret's chordoma starts to get bigger, however, it is gonna get more painful. The chordoma is gonna be putting more pressure on their tail, pushing on their bones, all kinds of stuff. On top of that, they're gonna be running it into stuff, possibly getting stuck, and that can cause a lot of pain. Something really important to keep in mind is that even if your ferret's chordoma is really small, some ferrets get very irritated by them. And so if you see your ferret, um, like licking, biting, scratching, just like agitating their chordoma all the time, no matter how small, that means it's very uncomfortable for them and you may wanna look into getting it removed earlier rather than later. How do you treat a chordoma? So the most common way to treat a chordoma is through surgery. And actually because a chordoma grows, you know, deep into your ferret's tail, it's not just like this, this shallow surface zit kind of thing they pop off. It's really like ingrained. They actually have to amputate part of the tail, which I know sounds scary, but it's the best way to get rid of a chordoma. Luckily, chordomas are not known to metastasize, which means spread throughout the body and kind of cause a whole bunch of chaos. And so if you do get the surgery done, it is extremely unlikely that the chordoma will return. It should take care of it completely. How much is this gonna cost? Typically what we've found in our own research is removing a ferret's chordoma can cost anywhere to $1,000. It is not the most insane complex surgery that you can have performed on a ferret, but it is still a surgery, so it's gonna cost a fair amount of money. The best thing that you can do is start saving now. Also, it's important to find a vet that you trust that has experience specifically with ferrets and has removed a chordoma before. If you have a ferret with a specific health problem like in solenoma, make sure that your vet is familiar with treating ferrets like that because they're gonna need very special considerations before and after surgery. How do you know it's time to get surgery on your ferret's chordoma? It depends on a lot of things and I guess we can tell you our personal experience. So right now we have a ferret with a pretty sizable chordoma. I'd say it's, is it around the size of a cherry or a blueberry, something like that? And the biggest reason that we decided to get surgery is because people yelled at us on the internet. Just kidding. We ultimately decided to book Moose's surgery to get his chordoma removed because of three things that we saw happen that were basically the line that we did not wanna cross. 
So the first thing is that Moose started getting his tail caught in things that he would do normally in everyday life. And so we felt it was hurting his overall quality of life. One of the biggest examples is he loves to sleep in his favorite kitchen cabinet. And because his cordoma had gotten so big, he would actually get it stuck when he was trying to get in the little cabinet door. And that was really irritating to him and it was hard to see. The next thing is we actually started seeing when the ferrets would wrestle, Albert, our other ferret, decided to bite Moose in the cordoma and Moose yelped out. And it was like, this doesn't seem like a good idea. If he's starting to have this like disadvantage when they wrestle and do their playing stuff, I don't, I don't like how he's, I don't like it. Number three is probably the biggest reason and the one that you specifically need to look out for is Moose's cordoma was smaller a couple months ago. We took him to a vet, they palpated it and determined ultimately it wasn't a big enough issue to get a surgery. Since then, it's grown bigger and um, it's become more susceptible to getting cuts. And so when he's dragging around the floor, when he's playing with his brothers, it, um, it gets little cuts and scabs. And why that's kind of a big deal is that any cut is gonna be susceptible to infection. But think about this, especially a body part that constantly drags throughout his environment on the ground collecting bacteria. We can get a really serious infection in his tail if we don't take care of it soon. And so that's the biggest reason for us that we ultimately elected to schedule Moose's surgery and get it done within the next couple months. Several months later. Yay! You finished your surgery. You did so good, little baby. Oh, thank you. Moose just got his cordoma surgery a couple days ago, and we want to tell you guys how it went. Look at Moose's tail. It's all gone. The bump is all gone. How do you feel, guy? He feels good, he told me. So I want to go through a play-by-play -play of how it went, how we prepared, what happened during the surgery, and then also what the follow-up was like after the surgery. Before I get into Moose's surgery story, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe right now. And if you're already subscribed, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps more people discover our videos and it helps this ferret community grow. So I'd really appreciate it because we come out with new videos every week that are educate, edu videos every week that are educate, oh my God. We come out with new videos every week that are entertaining and educational. So after Moose's surgery was over, it cost us about $580, and that actually includes the blood tests that they wanted us to do beforehand. The specific blood tests our vet had us do to make sure Moose was healthy enough include testing his blood glucose levels, which I'll get into in a second, as well as certain inflammatory enzymes. So when Moose had his blood glucose tested before the surgery at the vet clinic, it was around 60, which the vet decided was a little bit too low for him to undergo surgery. So they gave him a dexamethasone injection, which is a steroid that would help boost his blood glucose numbers. Moose also got a buprenorphine injection, which is a narcotic pain medication that should last around eight hours. According to our vet, Moose was under anesthesia for about 30 minutes, although some of that time was prep time and not actual surgery time. A quick thing I wanna mention is Moose did happen to bleed quite a bit during his surgery, but I'm not sure if this is totally typical of all cordoma surgeries or just how Moose's surgery ended up being. Oh gosh. To access the surgery site easier and amputate part of Moose's tail, what they ended up doing was shaving the tail. Like you can see here, they shaved it all the way up to here just so they could access it easier. And um, who knows how quickly or if at all Moose's hair is gonna grow back. So I will keep you guys posted on that. Because Moose has a shaved tail, he now looks like a baby possum, which I don't mind at all because I love possums. An interesting thing that our vet told us is during surgery, keeping a ferret's body temperature up is very important. So she uses something called a hot dog warm pad that she wraps around the moose's body during surgery. And that helps to keep his body temperature up. After Moose's partial tail amputation, our vet placed two rows of stitches on the end of his tail. And that was because in case Moose became fixated on the edge of his tail in the surgery site and started biting, loosening some of those stitches, he would have another row of stitches to try to go through before anything was affected. Luckily for us, Moose has not been one of those ferrets that fixates on his tail, but if you end up having to get the surgery for your ferret, I would really look out for 
if your ferret is touching their tail excessively, biting it, licking it, Moose pretty much has not touched it at all. He ignores it. He doesn't even think about it. And that's a really good sign. Another thing our vet told us was to look out for some specific signs if the tail wasn't healing properly. So when Moose first came home with his tail, uh, newly amputated, it was a little bit red on the end, you know, a light pink, kind of a little bit different color than the rest of his tail. And it felt slightly warm to the touch. But after 24 hours, it was no longer warm to the touch and the tail was no longer pink. Um, we also never had any discharge coming out of the tail. If there was discharge, if the tail was hot to the touch after a day or so, and if it was red and looked kind of swollen, these would be indications that we need to let our vet know immediately because the tail could be infected. Moose was very weak when he came home from surgery, which makes sense because he was still coming off of anesthesia. So a big thing that was really important to me and Channing is we wanted to get some food in him before we knew he was about to find a dark place in our house and go to sleep for many, many hours as he worked the anesthesia out of his system and kind of dealt with his sore tail. What we opted to give Moose was a raw egg yolk, which hopefully stabilized his blood sugar after the surgery. Our vet also gave us a pain medication called Medicam that Moose was to have every 24 hours for the next four or five days. Something that was really cool to see is pretty much after 24 hours had passed after the surgery, Moose was totally back to his normal self and he actually seemed like he had more energy than he had before. You know, he used to have to drag around this big old tail and I think it bogged him down and possibly stressed him a little bit. But now with that tail gone, he, he runs around with his tail up, I think because it was so strong for so long keeping that tail up that without it, his tail goes whoop. Oh gosh. Um, so he just, he seems like somebody else had said that had their ferret's cordoma removed. Our ferret has a new lease on life. And I would say Moose is actually like that too. He seems more energetic now that he doesn't have that big cordoma weighing him down. Um, that's really cool to see. Channing says when Moose runs around with his new tail, he looks like a little RC car with an antenna. <laughs> At this point in time, Moose is actually geriatric because he's six years old, which is towards the end of his typical lifespan. And even though he's a little bit on the old side, our vet decided that he was healthy enough to get the surgery. And we opted to get it because we wanted to improve his quality of life. He's given us so much these past six years. And even if he has a little bit of time left, we wanted it to be as carefree and stress-free as possible. One thing that I continue to learn over and over is that animals just like moose are incredibly resilient creatures. As soon as 24 hours had passed, moose was right back to his rambunctious, loving, silly, funny self. Um, and it was like he didn't even remember having surgery at all. If you are contemplating getting a cordoma removal surgery for your ferret or having their tail partially amputated, I would keep in mind a couple things. Number one is make sure you find a vet that actually treats ferrets and has experience with them. Make sure they have removed a cordoma from a ferret before. And also ask if they have experience treating ferrets specifically with things like insulinoma that affect their blood glucose levels, because it's really important to stabilize their blood glucose before they go into surgery. If you're looking for a way to support moose and the modern ferret this holiday season, some great ways to do that are to check out our annual ferret calendar we've done for the last five years. It's in over 20 countries around the world, if you could believe it. It continues to grow. We also have some really fun items in our store that we just added, like our best-selling ferret sweater that says, ask me about my business. We also have some ferret themed canvas prints. We have notebooks and a whole bunch of other stuff. We're always adding new stuff to our store to support this dream we have to educate the world about ferrets. Every time you make a purchase in our online store, that allows us to make more of these educational videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if this was Weasley, the best video you've seen on ferret tail tumors, make sure to like, subscribe, Give us a thumbs up and check out our online store at themodernferret.com. All right, bye guys. Bye. Good job, you did good.